What's up guys, Darcy from Last One Stand Strategy. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a pretty basic uh, forest tea. Um, there's a couple things here that I bought from places, but most of the stuff I've found in the woods. Um, like for instance, this is a Canadian ginseng. Buy this stuff from an Asian store up the road. Got some good medicine there. Um, that part was store bought. Pretty much everything else here I've wild forage myself, um, or was given to me by friends. Uh, big piece of chaga given to me by Yara Willard of Harmonic Arts years back. Um, got some reishi here, given to me by my friend Allison. Got some agaricon, old friend gave me. Um, was out uh, the other day in wild harvesting medicines. Uh, with my lovely lady and this is one of the things I picked up with some Usnia. I'm going to do a video on this soon, very soon. This is very important for this protocol. Um, I got some uh, needles here from Spru Spruce Tree Sitka and also a uh, Fir Douglas and some Western Red Cedar. A couple handfuls of Dry turkey tail mushrooms and a handful of pieces of our uh, artist conch. You guys can kind of see that there. All right, so it's a little different than most videos I do. This is probably the first one I've actually done inside before, um, and uh, yeah, this, this should be pretty interesting. All right, you guys. All right, so uh, we got a couple different things going on here at once. Um, I've got uh, a batch of um, sencha tea that I'm making uh, for my John mothers. Um, that could be another video. Um, but also at the same time, I got some tea that I'm heating up. So this is this is a tea that I had already made, um, and uh, it's kind of getting down to the the last you know wash of it. The way I make teas, I make them quite complex with a lot of really dense cell, uh, things like mushrooms and roots, um, things that need a little bit more cooking to get all the nutrition out of them. Um, so because of that, I'll usually end up doing maybe three or four washes depending on the ingredients. And there's kind of one trick to this because as a lot of you know that have already done this kind of stuff, um, there's volatile oils in these kind of plant-like parts to this. and those will be destroyed with heat so those go away later on the end so to start i'm just going to draw the rest of the tea off of here um into a container and then we'll uh we'll use that leftover tea um then to add to our next batch um we're gonna make this as strong as we possibly can I mean, well, when you want to have a strong, powerful immune system, especially in times like this. Okay? All right, you guys. Okay, uh, we got some burdock root all ground up. We got some ginseng root all ground up. Some turmeric all ground up. And just a little more ginseng also. Now, these guys, I'm gonna give them a little more heat because they, they got a pretty dense cell wall. Um, I'm gonna add the green stuff a little bit. But first, um, 
Sorry about that. I'm gonna add some of this amazing agaricon. Now what you're seeing is, is a wax that's coming off of there. It's quite interesting. It's the only mushroom I've ever seen that, uh, that creates a wax out of its fruiting body. It's a really strong antiviral. Uh, if you don't know about agaricon already, uh, Fomitophis officinalis, I highly suggest you look into it. Um, it can be found here in uh, the west coast of British Columbia. And this is really nice. Ganoderma species. This is often referred to as a western rishi. Another really strong mushroom. Um, this one's adaptogenic by nature, but also um, has some other strengths, like it's an anti-inflammatory. All around has some good nutrition in it though. So I, I like to really use quite a bit of it throughout the year. So I'm out just kind of breaking up the fungus itself. And again, I could, you know, I could cut these in little pieces. I could grind these too. But again, like I said, this is all going to be getting uh, probably a couple passes at least, if not, if not four. Um, but yeah, so the reishi mushroom is another one you want, you guys want to look into. Really good anti-inflammatory, just loaded with all kinds of polysaccharides that are water soluble, so you can get a high level of nutrition just with this kind of uh, this kind of long decoction. So the difference between a, an infusion and a decoction is um, infusion, we boil the water, let the, let the boiling stop, then add that to whatever it is that we want to extract from. So for instance, a lot of teas nowadays are just infusions, whereas a decoction is we actually put a low heat, well, I shouldn't say low heat, it's probably a high heat, high to medium heat on for a long time. Um, so we're looking at probably about 45 minutes to half an hour, half an hour, 45 minutes for this. Um, before I pull my first cup off of it and then I'll add water and I'll do this again and I'll actually repeat this process until um, I can start to see the water get a little bit more clear and that's usually about the fourth or fifth pass. So what I just finished ripping up here, this is a little bit of turkey tail mushroom. Um, turkey tail is again one of those mushrooms that you probably should look into. Uh, really good anti-inflammatory but also again as like the other two before it is a really strong immunomodulator. Um, so this gives our immune system a lot of the weapons and tools it needs to fight different types of agents like viruses and bacteria. Uh, here, throwing just a little bit of artist conch, which normally I'd like to have more of, but I've been drinking a lot of it. Working on superior health. Um, and then over here, this is Usnia. This is probably one of the most important mushroom slash lichen slash plant that you should know right now. This is a very powerful and potent uh, organism against um, any sort of upper respiratory infections, okay? Uh, now, the thing about old man beard or usnea um, is you wanna look for the piece with the central column, okay? And the central column, when you pull on it, it's gonna have a little bit of a little bit of give to it, especially if it's fresh. Okay, it's a really strong antimicrobial, antiviral, and antibacterial. And this can be found all over the place here in the BC West Coast. So again, another thing you need to guys need to learn. Um, I'll go into I'll do a video of this at some point. So people are gonna ask how much do I add? Um, generally, because I'm flushing it so much, um, and sometimes I'll even water it down, is I'm probably adding about three tablespoons to four tablespoons per cup of each ingredient. Now, the going rate usually in herbalism is one cup of water to a tablespoon, um, but I wanna make this really strong and I want this to last. So I'm gonna give this a stir, add a little more hot water, turn up the heat a bit, and then, uh, yeah, when we get to the next stage of this, bring you guys back. Yeah, with a lot of this kind of stuff, you know, um, kind of hang out with it, give it a stir, maybe like maybe 20 minutes, maybe every 10 minutes, depends, from in the kitchen. Um, get 
and all this stuff. It's kind of cooking off the sides here, like different waxes. Okay, so um, generally, the way I was taught is I'm going to use about 10% or roughly my mass of green tea stuff is going to be my hemlock. Okay, so the western hemlock here. So it's a really, really important uh, tree to learn here on the west coast. Not only can you make great medicine from it, but you can actually make fire from it almost all year round. It's a really, really good wilderness tool. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit more um, in this tea of cedar. So now I'm using about, about a tablespoon to four cups of water here. Actually, maybe even maybe even five or six cups of water to be honest. Yeah, I'm just gonna break it up, get more cell wall exposed to the water. Uh, here, I've got my Douglas fir. I'm using quite a bit more for my fir than I use in my cedar, just a little bit more. Um, yeah, like maybe about double my cedar. And, you know, and a lot of this has to do with your taste. What is it you like to drink? Um, me, I like an assortment of flavors, but I also really appreciate powerful medicine. Again, these guys have a lot of volatile oils, so I don't want to give them too much heat. Um, really low heat for this. Again, the, the mushrooms and the roots, that's been on a high to medium heat for oh, half hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw in a little spruce. This is our Sitka spruce. Great tree around here to know. This kind of stuff grows in abundance too. Um, pretty big on making medicines uh, that I'm gonna use as a tonic. Um, so things that I gonna use quite often. Uh, I like to find sources locally that not only are in clean spaces, but also um, high volume. You know what I mean? I don't want to just like go get that amazing superfood where there's like only one, there's only one fucking piece in the whole country. It's so valuable. No, I'm totally not like that at all. I'll go for the thing that's kind of a happy medium. It's in high abundance and it's super strong. One of the reasons why I love Usnia is Usnia slash old man's beard just everywhere. Okay, and I got some uh, dried nettles here. Put a bunch of dried nettles in there, probably, yeah, about, about four. Four tablespoons to that's five or six cups of water. Let's stir all this up really good. Making sure everything's submerged. Look at this super cool cup my babe got for me. Holy fuck. So cool. Okay, you guys, we.